Howdy guys, it's Carnivore Kip. Thank you guys for tuning into my channel. Thank you for all the support that I've received, for all the comments from everyone. I'm trying to reach out to everybody as they comment because this I realize this is a growing community and I realize that everyone's been supportive of me and I want to be an encouragement to everyone else as well. So today I'm going to be smoking uh, baby back ribs for supper and I figured why not I'll bust out the camera and show you guys a little bit about how I do it. Uh, I used to use all the sugary rubs and all that stuff but sometimes I would do Texas style. Today we're going Texas style again. Baby back ribs on my drum smoker and uh, if you guys like videos like this please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video to get it out there to more people. I really appreciate it. And as a quick uh, progress report, the past few days I haven't dropped any more weight, but I haven't gained any weight either. Uh, I still feel amazing. My shoulder hasn't been hurting at all. I have this disease, I hate even calling it a disease, but it's an autoimmune condition called sarcoidosis. I don't know if you've ever heard of sarcoidosis, but it had affected lymph nodes going down into my lungs and I've still got a scar on my neck. They thought that I had uh, like at cancer at first, they thought it was lymphoma and then we found out that it was sarcoidosis, but it also causes like inflammation throughout your body and stuff like that. And that's another great benefit of switching to the carnivore diet as I'm cutting out the garbage and a lot of the different things that uh, that could contribute to the inflammation. So I'm excited about that. Being from way down deep in Alabama, I love a good wood smoke flavor. So I have these hickory chunks that I'm going to add to my pit and I'll show you me adding them real quick. And uh, I had some leftover charcoal already. Uh, so I didn't have to add any charcoal to my drum before I started this cook. Let's add a little bit of wood chunks. And they're hickory wood chunks, by the way. I like uh, cherry as well. I like pecan. I like oak. But uh, I like a little stronger flavor sometimes, so I think hickory is my favorite. So I have these little lighter cubes that I got from Walmart. They're like a pack of 50 of them for like $5. I'm just going to toss them in this little hole and light the, light the charcoal in the charcoal basket. They should be going. But I just put the charcoal basket down in the center of the drum. When you use a drum smoker, you put it down there and I'll put a grate in. There's like five levels in here. You see those levels? where I can uh, put my grate at whatever level I want to for my cooking. I normally just use the top grate, but if it's like a turkey or something really tall, then I'll bump it down a grate or two. For those of you that didn't watch my video the other day, all you gotta do once you have the grate on is the little damper down here, you pull it open all the way. Once, wait till your smoker's coming up to temp pretty good. You want, basically you want a good fire. You don't want it to smother the fire before you close the top. And once I close the top, there's a, there's a handle up here. I'll open it all the way until I get to the tent that I want to be at, which is usually 250 to 300. So guys, I know that I was just saying that you don't have to pull the membrane off. And the reason that I say that is because when you're cooking at like 275 to 300, uh, the membrane will kind of crisp up instead of being gummy. And when it crisp up, it, it'll bite clean through whenever you bite your ribs. Uh, I also am not going to put uh, a binder on these ribs where a lot of people will use uh, mustard. And I've done that plenty of times like with pulled pork and uh, different cuts of meat, uh, especially ribs too, but you don't, 
you don't have to do that whenever you're doing Texas style. That really comes into play whenever you're doing uh, ribs that have like a sweet uh, rub, sweet flavor to them. Like I used to use Killer Hogs, uh, the barbecue rub a lot, and multiple other brands, as well as mix my own up with like brown sugar and stuff. Uh, but you don't you don't have to use a binder whenever you're doing Texas style ribs so it saves you a step you'll see in a minute how easy it is to season these ribs and then we'll get them on the pit stay tuned you always want to check your ribs once they come out the pack because sometimes you can, like this piece right here it's not going to cook very good so just shave that off you could, if you're worried about the membrane, you could take a butter knife and a paper towel and go right underneath there and just pull it up slowly. But I'm not worried about that with these. All right, do you see this right here? That right there is not gonna cook well, that chunk. You can cook it for something, but I just wanna get rid of it for today. I got me some salt, pepper, garlic, and a little jalapeno powder in this mixer that I'm gonna put on these ribs. But it, if you, the higher you hold your bottle, the more evenly it will uh, spread onto the ribs. It won't be as clumpy all over the place. And remember, you can go back over it as many times as you want. Now, half these carnivores love salt, right? So the more you get, the more you go over them, the saltier they're going to be. Hit the other side. That's some pretty fat inside those ribs. I don't know if you're picking it up on the video but they look good all right I think we're seasoned up when you think you got enough seasoning with a big piece of meat like this you can look, use a little more when it's like burgers or something you can very easily over season it or pork chop but look how much meat is on that I actually like to hit the edges a little bit so run down them gently. It's gonna give you a better bite. See like that piece right there? That right there, man, that's gonna be good. My wife's gonna wanna steal that bite, but she's not getting it. All right, so these, these ribs are seasoned. That's how easy it is. All right, guys, pit's up to 250, so what do we do? Like I said earlier, we're gonna close the stack down some that way we don't climb up to 400 degrees and then the bottom we're going to shut it down halfway just that simple and these ribs are technically ready to go on now all right guys i'm getting ready to open the hatch and toss these ribs on there let me go grab them real quick Baby backs getting ready to go on. They smell good and they ain't even been on the pit yet. When you put your ribs on your pit, the way you lay them is the way they're gonna look. So try to squeeze your edges in. It helps the meat present better. So depending on what you're cooking on, the ribs may take longer or less than these ribs are gonna take me. On this particular smoker, this drum smoker, they normally take around three hours at about 275. They might hit 300 degrees sometimes, sometimes as low as 250. But don't freak out about temps. If, this, if you didn't watch my last video, please don't freak out over temps. When I cook them on my offset smoker, they normally take about an hour longer than this. They normally take around four, sometimes even four and a half hours. But, I'll be honest, the offset smoker makes the best ribs. A drum smoker is incredible. I love my charcoal grill as well. Nothing beats a stick burner. Anybody that thinks a pellet smoker is better than a stick burner has lost their lid. Pellet smokers are awesome. They're very convenient. They're kind of like an oven. They, they run well, they hold temps well. As a matter of fact, if you don't have a smoker, I would probably start out with a pellet smoker because it can help you to learn how to cook 
barbecue as far as like when the meat's ready and stuff like that which I'll show y'all in this video how I can tell when these ribs are ready so guys drop a comment in my video and let me know are you guys just using salt on your meat or are you using things like salt pepper and garlic uh, what seasonings are y'all using uh, I'm new to the carnivore diet I've only been doing it for a little under two months and I, of course I know that the obvious don't use brown sugar or sugar or anything like that uh, but let me know if there's anything else that y'all use or any rubs that you buy because uh, I'd be interested so listen guys I've been trying to stop smoking but I can't I've been trying for years and years and years my wife's got so upset with me because I've spent so much money on so much so much meat and so much so much seasonings and I just don't know if I can stop so what am I going to be doing tomorrow after I smoke these ribs today? I'm going to fire up my Shirley, my big offset stick burner, and I'm going to smoke some more meat. And guess what I'm going to do next weekend? I'm going to smoke some more meat. And this week, during the week, uh, if I'm not smoking meat, I'll be cooking in my cast iron pans. If y'all want to watch that, watch the next video. You get tired of that video, watch the one after that. Whenever you smoke meat all the time, people ask you to do stuff. And the problem with that is they love my homemade smoked mac and cheese. And they love my uh, homemade recipe uh, smoked baked beans. And so tonight I have to prep mac and cheese and baked beans in the big full pans like six pounds of noodles in one pan with a lot of different cheese. I use uh, white cheddar in mine uh, to make a, a smoked white mac and cheese. And then uh, another whole pan of the beans. And uh, the bad thing is since I'm on carnivore diet, I get to smell it, I get to cook it, look at it, and I know what's in it, but I don't get to eat it. I guess I'll just have to I guess I'll just have to use restraint and use willpower and stay motivated because I can't be 486 pounds ever again. I have got to get this weight off if I want to live a long life and raise my daughter and meet my grandkids. I have to make these changes. All right, guys. Whenever you can probe your ribs and they probe like butter, they're done. You see that crack? They're, they're done. They're actually, I'll be honest, they're just a hair overdone. But they're still going to be good. A lot of guys wrap these in the middle of their cook. But I like that little bit of extra smoke flavor I get. And then what I do is when they're, and I don't always do this, but a lot of the times I do, especially with like Texas style ribs, once they're done cooking, I wrap them in aluminum foil and then just let them rest and then the aluminum foil will keep them hot for a while but they'll be ready whenever I want to eat them whether it's an hour or two hours they'll stay warm that way alright guys I'm having to end this video pretty quick because it's just me and my daughter tonight my wife she had to go to a uh, baby shower I hope you like the video and I know that you won't like it as much as I enjoy these ribs. Alright, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate it. God bless.